everyone and welcome to the final part of our three-part series on the Prussia's DC motor speed control. In this video we will finish up everything by building a speed control loop. In order to control the speed of the build DC motor we will use PI controller or proportional integral controller. The input to this controller will be the difference between the reference mechanical speed and the measured mechanical speed of the build DC motor and the output of this controller Will be the torque reference. Now, since the torque is given by the product of the torque constant and the current, we can actually build the current reference for our hysteresis current control loop that we built in the previous video. So we get our motoring or driving torque, which is going to make the motor speed omega follow the omega reference in the presence of load torque changes and disturbances. Now, this difference is then fed into the plant of our control, which can be derived from the torque balance equation, and in this case it is assumed to be a purely inertial load. And from this equation we can see that motoring torque should compensate for load torque changes. Now the question is why are we using PI controller, why not only use proportional gain as the controller? Well, because here we have disturbances in the form of load torque. The proportional controller has four disturbance rejection properties and this will result in non-zero steady state error. So the error will be proportional to the load torque and the proportional gain. Therefore, we are going to add integral action and we are going to form PI controller and ensure that we have zero steady state error. So the proportional gain is going to increase the speed of the controller and integral gain is going to help it achieve zero steady state error. In order to derive the values of the proportional and integral gains of the PI controller, we can take a look at the closed loop transfer function. So the transfer function of the PI controller is given by KP plus KI over S, and we have the transfer function of the plant, which is one over JS. So the closed loop transfer function can be written as this. And you can derive this by yourself and let me know if you have any problems with this. I will be happy to help. And since this is a second order transfer function, the denominator of second order transfer function can be written as this, where omega n is the natural frequency and zeta is damping factor. So we are going to choose omega and zeta to set the position of the closed loop poles and we are to choose zeta, the damping factor, such as the system response is fast enough with minimal overshoot. And now by equating the coefficients of the closed loop denominator and denominator equation, we can get our controller gains. Now let's see how this works in Simulink. So this is the Simulink implementation and here we can see the speed reference and the feedback speed from the build DC motor and this feeds into the PI controller. You can notice this sign here. This is the saturation and the anti-wind-up algorithm I implemented there in order to ensure stable performance and these topics will be covered in future videos. This is the inverse of torque constant so this then goes into the current control loop that we built in the previous video and then we get the switching signals. And here we have the response of the speed tracking. So here, if you zoom in, for example, here, you'll see this blue line is the reference and the red line is the actual speed. And here we see the small overshoot as expected. And that covers everything we learned here today. And it uh, encompasses this entire series on the speed control of the brushless DC motor. I hope you learned something here with me and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video series.